Hello YouTube and welcome to another Slotted In There tutorial. In this video we're going to be showing you how to install Aether SX2 onto an Android device in order to emulate PS2 games. We won't be doing it from the Google Play Store because Aether SX2 is no longer available on the Play Store so we're going to have to install this through the APK. There's a couple of things that we're going to need to assume before we start this tutorial. One is that you have connected up your Android device via a USB cable in order to access its internal storage from a Windows machine. Another thing is that you have already dumped your PS2 BIOS from your original PS2 and copied your ROMs from your original discs so that they are available to transfer and they are being stored on your Windows computer. Lastly, you're going to need an Android device. The more modern, the better. I have had great success with a Galaxy S24 Plus and for the sake of this demonstration, I'm using a Galaxy Tab 9 FE, which has also been pretty performant. Now let's get into the actual tutorial. You're going to find this link that you see up here down in the video description. If you click on that, it'll take you to this website where you can click on the Android package archive download here, and that will download Aether SX2. From there, we can go into our downloads on our window machine where we can see it. And we're going to right click that, cut and go to the pre-prepared folder that we have containing the BIOSes and ROMs that we mentioned earlier. And we're just going to right click and paste that in there. Now we need somewhere to put this. So over on our Android device, we're going to go down to the folder option. Now this will be somewhere on your Android device. You just need to find it. And once you click it, it will open up like this. Now you may have an SD card slot on your Android device. So another way of doing this would be to just copy all the files and folders onto that SD card and then plug that into your Android device. That's not the way I'm doing it here. I'm going to be putting it onto the internal storage. So I'm just going to click internal storage. Now in the internal storage, you might not see it looking like this. It might look like this. If you want to change between those two views, just click next to where it says essentials and click all and it will show you all the files and folders. Now, in order to create the folder, we're going to go to the three little dots up here and we're going to go create folder. We're going to just going to call this emulation and create. Now that we've got our emulation folder ready, all we need to do is transfer these files and folders into this. So if I just click on that so that we can see that, so I'm just going to go up one in the file structure so that we just got this PS2 folder. I'm going to right click that, copy it because I want to keep the original. And then in order to put it into this folder, we are just going to go over to the internal storage, which is which is showing up here. So if I go into this Tim's tab S9 FE then I can double click on internal storage and I can see that emulation folder, double click on that. And then we're just going to paste that in there. This is going to take a little while to transfer because there's quite a lot of data there and we can see it already popping up in here. So we're just going to speed this up and come back in a second. Bizarre, the files are finished copying. So now we can have a quick look in here and we can see we have bases, ROMs and the install APK. At this point, we can disconnect our Android device from our PC. Now we're just going to complete this on the tablet itself. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to click on the install of the APK. We will get a security warning that says we're not allowed to install that from there. So we're just going to click on settings and then we are going to allow permission for my files by just toggling that switch. And then immediately it asks us, do we want to install it? And we're going to click on install. Now that it's installed, we're going to click on open and it'll want to walk us through the rest of the setup. So first of all, we're just going to click next and then we're going to go past the disclaimers by clicking next again. And then in here we have the option of changing some settings if we want to. We can do this now or we can come back and do it later. I'm just going to leave it for now because we just want to get it working. So we're going to click next. And then at this point, it's going to ask us about importing a BIOS. I'm just going to skip over this, but we are going to come back to this in just a second. Now it's going to ask us for our game directory. So we're going to need to navigate back to that folder that we created 
and then select the ROMs folder from inside. And then use this folder at the bottom of the screen and allow. Then we're going to click next again and it's going to tell us that the setup is complete. Obviously we haven't done the BIOS yet, but I just wanted to show you what happens if you try to run a game without a BIOS. So let's just click on Tekken 5 and it tells us that we have a missing BIOS. So we're going to say we do want to find the BIOS now. Yes. And then we are going to go back up to the PS2 folder and then we're going to go down to the BIOS folder. Now from here, the only problem is we don't actually know which file it is that is the correct BIOS file. One way of doing this is just literally working your way down the line. I think it might be the second to last one for me. Unfortunately, there's no way of seeing the file names properly, but I think it might be the second to last one. That's imported something there, so that looks like it's good. Now, when we click on Tekken 5, the game loads. From here, we can use the on-screen controls or we can pair a controller to it. Now, I might do a follow-up video where we look at some of the accessories you can use in order to make a better experience. But for the sake of just proving that this works, we will uh, quickly select an arcade battle. Looks like the analog stick doesn't work for this game. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go into uh, the controller icon, which is in the top right near the close X. So that little D-pad icon. And then we are going to go on to touch screen and then touch screen controller view. And then we're going to say digital pad. And then we're just going to close that off. Now we've got a D pad that does work. And then we're going to click on an arcade battle just to make sure this does work. Get ready for the next battle. Now I do suck at this game, so uh, apologies in advance. Oh. Part of the problem is, is you don't get a tactile sense of touching the buttons on this. So I kept accidentally trying to hit circle and completely missing it. This is why you might want to pair a controller with it. Uh, unfortunately, I can't make you any better at the games. But at least now you know how to install Aether SX2 onto an Android device so that you can play your old PS2 games. I hope this video has been useful, and if you enjoy what you saw, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one.